Hi, Will for Sound on Sound here at the NAMM show in Anaheim with Joe Bull of Joko. Joe, how are you doing? Not too bad, thanks, Will. How are uh, you? I'm very well, thanks, yeah. Um, so you've got your first ever Project Studio focused audio interface, correct? Yeah. Can you tell well, us about it? Sure. Well, this is the, um, this is the cello device that we've uh, created. We've got two very high quality mic preamp channels, yeah, both of which have got sort of like 127 dB um, conversion. They all work, everything works at 384K or up to 384K. Okay. Yep. Um, the mic channels have got all the standard controls and insert points so that you can attach external analog gear directly into the analog mic channel. Um, we've also got on this box talkback so you can talk back and slate directly to the DAW if you need to. Mm -hmm. Monitor controls. You've got the headphone vol volumes directly you know, at your thing. You've got two headphone outputs. Okay. And then at the same time, we've got this um, process called Top Plus, which is just adding a little bit of sparkle to the top end, which again, you can adjust the rollover frequency directly on this front panel. So is that in the analog domain you're doing that, or is that digital? The, the Top Plus is actually in the digital domain, but okay. everything else is analog processing. Right. Yeah. Okay, and um, what other inputs do you have? I noticed uh, a light pipe input at the back. Sorry, a, oh, I, yeah, I noticed yeah, ADAS on the back. We've got a couple of uh, light pipe inputs so that if you want to attach extra you know, HD converters or whatever, or even pull in your old archive stuff, then yeah, you can do that as well. And is that both input and output over ADAT? Just input. ADAT. We, uh, we asked around and no one really needs to use ADAT output anymore, so... Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, you have an instrument input as well then, do you? Yeah, no, it's got a high z in instrument input onto a separate uh, you know, part of the uh, yeah, conversion process, so... Yeah. And so why now for a, a desktop interface for, jo for Joko? Well, I suppose from our perspective, it was trying to apply some of the developments that we've been doing on you know, our professional range of interfaces and trying to see whether we can provide those same benefits back into the, uh, you know, the, the maybe more dedicated studio environment rather than the studio and live environment. Sure. Okay. And, and on the software side, what have you got? Well. What we've got here is effectively Joko Control, which is a similar device to the one we use to control the multi-channel recorders and uh, playback devices. You've got all the mic preamps um, down here. Then we've got low, lat low latency monitor mixers for the main, um, main mixer output yeah, that goes to your main monitors. You've got also a low latency for both separate headphone amps. Um, and you know, when you use things like talkback, it automatically brings you know, the talkback into, and at the same time, we've also got the uh, full studio monitor mixing yeah, on screen. Yeah, other than that, everything else, you've got a full UAC2 interface, so just use it with whatever workstation of, of choice is your um, yeah, bête noire. Okay, Joe, how much is it going to cost then, and when will it be available? Well, we're hoping that the first units will be available for sale by about May this year, and the price, we haven't definitely set it yet, but probably somewhere around 900 to 1,000 bucks. Okay, thanks a lot, Joe. Not at all, thank you.